My name is Noel Mbala. I am um, a former minister in the DRC, in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I, uh, I have a background in economics. I studied economics in, uh, at the university, then went to work in a building company for 20 years before getting into politics under Mobutu. Mobutu was president for 32 years in our country. And in the 90s, it became uh, um, obvious that uh, we wanted the dictatorship to stop. That is why I stepped into politics. I am one of the prime movers of uh, an opposition party and we organized uh, our people for change in, uh, in the DRC uh, that will um, uh, make me enter into a government in uh, 1991 as Minister of Transport first and then later as Minister of Public Works and Regenerations. And in 1992, I left the government. I was forced into exile first in South Africa because of uh, me changing uh, my support, uh, switching my support to um, another leader. And uh, when Mobutu was stopped in 1997, I came back to the DRC, but unfortunately the new regime uh, which came with Mr. Laurent Kabila did not want people who were in a high position uh, under Mobutu's uh, regime. So they decided to arrest all of us. Uh, many of my colleagues were arrested and I was uh, forced to run for my life in 1996. I came here in the, uh, in, um, in the UK in, uh, on the 26th of April 1998 and fortunately uh, I was met by uh, unkind uh, immigration officers who really uh, did not uh, take into account my past uh, as uh, minister. I even brought a photocopy of my diplomatic passport to which they discarded. They put me into a detention. Uh, I spent one month in uh, Asla detention, detention center and I was released to London. It took me five years before getting a stay in this country. Um, this is one of the dramas uh, people in exile live. We come is, e, here in exile not because we are looking for a better life. Some maybe, but the majority of us, we come here because we are not safe at home. We come here to seek sanctuary. That is why I decided to come here. I built my life back home. My wife were, is a lawyer, she has a, her own firm. I was a director in a building company. We built a big house which we cannot live in. So the situation in the DRC right now, as I speak, is really, really very dire. Uh, people like me, if I go back there, what will happen even if I'm not arrested at your port, because they know that if I am arrested at your port, uh, there will be people who may report that. They will let me in, but later on, when nobody is watching, they will send people uh, to kill me. It is what is happening. They tried, they invaded our house twice hoping that maybe my wife or myself may be in the house. Right now, our house has been totally destroyed. They came there, 200 uh, military men, 
searching for weapons which they did not find because we do not need weapons. We are opposing the regime peacefully, but uh, they are still uh, looking for us. Governments in the West tend to solve the, the refugee problem by trying to, to deal with the consequences. They do not try to deal with the reason, the root causes. The root causes are a bad, poor government, governments in, uh, in African, many African countries. And dictators have the support of the international community. This is why they can do everything they want, as long as they have the support of Western superpowers, people are dying, people are forced to flee the country. I think that there are reasons for the Western countries who have colonized the Africa, who are still supporting the dictators in Africa, they have a moral duty to protect those who suffer from those dictatorships. The situation in the DRC. The DRC is a very big country situated in the heart of Africa, 2,500 2, square kilometers. It is a very large country, very rich in uh, natural resources, mainly copper, gold, diamond, and a lot of, of timber, coffee, cassiterite, and for the time being, the war in the eastern part of the Congo is because of coltan. You know, coltan is used in uh, making mobile phones and um, laptops, and Congo is very rich in coltan. And unfortunately for us, uh, th those big uh, the companies outside the, 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 the Africa, they do not want to pay taxes, they do not want to, to, to pay the price. So what they do, they um, give we weapons or political and diplomatic support to some countries like Rwanda. And Rwanda is organizing, Rwanda and Uganda are organizing uh, security in the eastern part of the country so that they can exploit free of charge all the natural resources in, uh, in the eastern part of the country. The regime in place, President Kabila and his government, are doing absolutely nothing to protect the women who are raped and every single day. And they now they are trying. They are trying to fight the the armed groups in the in the eastern part of the country, but it has taken so uh, long for them to to do this that in the meantime, more than eight million people have lost their lives. All um, the schools have been destroyed. The medical system has been completely uh, destroyed, so uh, it will be very difficult for the DRC to, to really get uh, on track back again. We need in the DRC a government able to govern, to ensure security, to establish the, the state authority. We need a functioning government in the DRC. That is not the case now. Ms. Kabila, who is there since 2001, he has been there for 13 years. He has proved that he is totally incapable of uh, leading the country forward. How is it that when people go in other countries, in Saudi Arabia, to have oil they pay. Why don't don't they want to pay when it comes to Congolese
natural resources. Uh, in my view, the government is not effective. If we have a, a competent, effective government, they will. There are international laws. They will uh, negotiate. They will uh, play by by the rules, the, ru the rules of the market. So we need a government who can first secure the country, the country, and then make the institution work. And they can take control of, of the resources. I think that time has come for powerful countries like uh, the UK and uh, the European Union to assess the situation and take some significant uh, steps in order to prevent further catastrophes. People are dying, people are fleeing from Africa in mass. When we see what is happening in Italy at the Italian border, we we are preoccupied that the Western countries do not deal with the root causes. Time has come. Africa must be a country at peace and a country where there is a future for the younger generations. Otherwise, Africa will be a ground for terrorism and as long as Europe continue with the same policies of supporting dictators in, in Africa, Europe will not have enough space to accommodate real refugees will come here in mass. Time has come to deal with the root causes in Africa. Thank you.